Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of What If. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This was just like straight up just like a fun episode. Like some episodes have had like fun to them, like I, I'd say like the... Uh, Captain Carter and the if T'Challa was Star Lord were like the most fun. Every other episode's been pretty depressing in actuality and just kind of like there's no like happiness to it. This was like the first like since the Captain Carter episode and the T'Challa episodes that's just like nah man it's just it's like a fun time. Thor's come to Earth because he's going to party because we find out the thing that's different in this continuity is Loki's not his brother. Like instead of Odin raising him as his son, he returned him to the Frost Giants, and so, interestingly enough, without having a mi uh, mischief-filled brother, it had an impact on Thor. Like, it's a weird thing to say that, like, his brother being the mischief maker that he was, he was always, like, because of their duo, he was always kind of, like, the stoic, more one to kind of balance out uh, Thor's kind of like, you know, party-ish side, like the frat bro that he was in Thor 1. It's like basically you got that without like any growth of like, obviously like he doesn't go on the adventures of Thor to become worthy. It's just kind of like, nah, he's just running rampant because uh, Odin ends up going into his deep sleep, which I love that Frigga's like touching his face like, oh, okay, well he's in his deep sleep. He's going, oh, I'm gonna go hang up with my girls. Bye, Thor. Don't throw a party. I'm like, why are you just balancing after Odin goes? Is, is that how that works? Okay, whatever. And so he ends up going to Earth and throwing the massive Universal Rager. And I love all the reference. Like, because it makes sense. Literally all the cosmos, like, came for this. So, like, basically everything Thor, uh, Guardians, and, you know, uh, Captain Marvel related is in this. So we see, uh, we see the, uh, got, um. Drax shows up, we see Yondu, we see Mantis, uh, we see Nebula, because she's trying to, like, oh, Mama needs a new eye or something like that at one point in time. Um, the squirrels uh, pop up, which, because I love Thor, it's like, oh, you look at me, and you, and you, and you, oh, oh, like, he's loving it and enjoying it. Uh, the Grand Master shows up. Uh, I was like, we even see, like, Valkyrie at one point in time. I'm like, um... Suter's there, um, and he's, like, trying to, like, get close to the Statue of Liberty, ends up burning off her arm, and I'm, like, just, like, it's just so much fun and shenanigans filled, and I love this, just kind of, like, Darcy and, uh, Jane, like, obviously, the very different circumstances, how they meet Thor, that he's, like, oh, we're here, like, you know, first contact with, like, aliens and stuff like that, she's, like, I want to be the first human, and Darcy's, like, what are you talking about? He, like, like, half the people on the strip have met him already, so what are you talking about? So she goes over there, and it's just, like, oh, like, she's, like, you have a better chance to talk about, oh, talk to this guy, he looks like a loser, and I love it's Howard being, like, well, big talk from a brunette, I was, like, yo! What the what the what the comebacks? And I even love later on that they get married because uh, he's like, oh, do you want like uh you know it's happy hour so half price nacho? She's like, oh fine, but it's not a date. He's like, oh let's see where this involves what this involves into. So they end up getting married, and I even love later on he's like, well look who came waddling back, Mrs. the Duck, and she's just like, not now, Howard. I just, I love it so much. It's so good, but like Jane hitting it off with Thor and him like, oh you're a G. She's like, oh like yeah. It's like like I say, it's just like a fun time. Like once again, it's like this would definitely be interesting. Like if you got it an extended like this could be like a like a superhero comedy all in its own right, like a full blown superhero comedy of just kind of like. Like, it's not the same, but almost got that, like, hangover vibe to it. Like, just, you have your party movies that are kind of, like, of the hangover-esque type of thing, you know? I mean, I guess you go almost like Fer Ferris Bueller's Day Off type of um, element. Um, I even love Loki, uh, Loki showing up, and he's like, oh. And it's like, oh, my brother from another mother. It's like, yeah, they have a very different relationship. But to be fair, like, because a lot of Loki's deep-seated resentments towards Odin and everyone, it's gone because he grew up knowing exactly who he was. It's because his family lied to him his entire time, and then he was part of the family, and he felt like he was more, like he had more claim to the throne than his brother did, so... It makes you wonder, like, how would any Loki, any of the Lokis we got to know feel meeting this variant is what I'd be curious about. Like, 
Loki from, um, you know, or any of the other Lokis, classic Loki kid, Loki, alligator Loki, uh, Sylvie, or even, you know, the Loki we follow during Loki, like how they feel about that version of Loki, who's not like as ambitious as any of them. Like he's probably the closest thing we'll get to like another, like just naturally good Loki, but because it's like, right, he wasn't, well, because even Sylvie was like, yeah, she knew she was adopted from the beginning. So, but I mean, her circumstances were created because of like the, the, the time, um, keepers and everything so like that was what made her situation what she was but it's like yeah like you know this is a loki that grew up kind of fine and okay without like any like ambition and stuff like that controlling him so because hell we even know kid loki killed his thor so it's just nice to know that this thor and like yeah they're like you know the mischievous and the like you know um the party prince and just like having fun and everything it's just it's it's just dope um we do see, like, other Guardians. We didn't see Gamora or, like, you know, Peter. We don't know what that situation is in this. But we did see, like, Rocket for, like, a quick second. Because um, at first I was like, it's interesting that there's no, like, Earth-based heroes jumping on this. But it's like, right, at this, we're ta this is Thor 1 continuity. So it's like, I mean, time frame. So, like, the only established hero would be Tony. And he's, like, maybe he hadn't gotten the call about all of this. I mean, it's still, like, it's happening in Nevada. So you'd probably have to get word because Fury's been taken out of picture. The moment he'll showed up and she's like, acting director, I was like, what happened to Fury? Oh, he got knocked out by Korg, which I love that. Um, and so it's like, yep, he's still unconscious. And I love that whole thing of, like, her sneaking and just, like, them got magic, them getting tattoos. She got magic. He got science. I'm like, it's just fun all the way around and it's like okay so how are we going to handle this situation so um because it's like yeah the only other hero that you could think of at this time is like maybe the hulk but like once again like fury's out of commission he hasn't had an opportunity opp opp opportunity to put the avengers because that's his secret so like no one else knows like oh in case i'm knocked out of the picture like activate this protocol in my absence it's like no it is interesting to know that maria knows to activate like i guess like there's certain things of like i guess it's like when things are super super bad and i'm not here then you you go the captain marvel route once again it's like at that point in time in the continuity of when they originally were making these movies they didn't know that they were so yes it's a it's a it's a um red con to a certain extent because it's like oh yes in the continuity captain marvel's always been in the back pocket Yes, but they only came up with that decision roughly like when they were doing Infinity War. That's why it came out then because they only came up with the plot device then. But but technically, it's supposed to be. It's, it, once again, they can do that now because it's like right, we know where the continuity is, and so we can throw that in there of like, yep, he's had it the entire time. Like they flexed that beeper twice. Uh, this being the second time, the first time being in Episode Three when all the Avengers ended up getting killed. Um, so, but like I said, it's just like. I'd say probably other Earth-based hero you know is active is maybe T'Challa as Black Panther might be active at this point in time. But it's like, this is also when, like, Wakanda's like, man, screw the outside world. We're not going to be worried about that type of thing. So it might be a situation of, like, right. Or once again, depending on how that really, like, plays out. Because I did get some context on someone saying, like, there's some comics that are connected. Because th there have been comics connected to the uh, MCU that apparently, like, show, like, T'Challa has been... Uh, the Black Panther for a while. It was Civil War wasn't his first time suiting up, you know. Uh, re regardless, tangents and all that aside. Um, but it's like I love that James trying to like protect Thor because it's like no, 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 he's not a threat. He's not that big of a deal. I even love it's like oh he left and she's like wait he left? Did he leave a note or something? I mean like you know uh, saying where he was going and Darcy's like smooth and she's like thanks. Uh, I, I just I loved it and um. It's like, well, we got to bring in the bit guns for this. And so it's like, oh, they open the suitcase and they activate and call Carol in. And I'm like, dude, legitimately, that was sick seeing Captain Marvel and Thor duke it out. Because uh, she like she is like the like super powered person that they kind of handle all of this. So I love and I also love that their fights took them like the different countries. It's like they went from like Italy to um the UK or something, uh, something of that sort. And then like, they went to like Africa. Like they were like, it was just kind of like bouncing from like one place to another like that, which knocking each other there. I even love the whole thing of just kind of like, right. She's like, uh, 
don't mess with this thing, even though, like, you know, Stonehenge, because she's like, well, this thing, that's important, but it's like, even we don't know what it is either. He's like, no, and he's like, ooh, 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 and he knocks it all down, and then she's like, dude, like, the supercharged, like, punches and stuff, like, it's so sick seeing that, like, them duke it out like that, because it's like, yo, because this episode also presented something I thought was fascinating, where it's like, later on, like, it's like, because it's like, no, Fury said, like, your punches were pretty much, like, ten nukes going off, and then it's like, uh, and then like, oh, your cat that can uh, eat an entire army. It's like, oh my god, you have your cat. You have a cat, and it's like, yeah. What's your cat's name? Goose. He's like, oh my god, you need a, like cat, like Wrangler or something like that. Um, I even love at one point, like, Darcy. Uh, you're you're here. You're at an eight. I need you down here to a four. She's kind of like, yeah, got it, because she's like offering like her help and stuff like that. She was like trying to get like a galactic job, because like I even love that she's like, oh, big fan. Like I'm like, dude, like that's the thing of like, because I was also wondering about this when it came to like the whole uh miss marvel thing too of like because typically miss marvel's thing is that she's a big fan of captain marvel but i'm like carol hasn't been on earth that long like her on in in end games apparently like a lot not unless she came back to earth and was super low key but like in games the first time she's been back since the 90s so that's why i'm like how are you how are you going to tie that together not unless you're going to make it future continuity is going to be like yeah carol's popping in and out i mean granted there's enough to know that like oh Scarlet, like, it brings up during a WandaVision that Wanda and Carol both went toe-to-toe with Thanos, you know, so it's like, so th- it's enough information out there in that regard, so it could still be like, oh my god, like, Carol, like, Captain Marvel went toe-to-toe with Thanos, that was pretty sick, if he hadn't sucker punched her with, like, one of the Infinity Stones, she would have, like, had the upper hand, but I also love that it's like, they, I think they're probably referencing a little bit, because Thor at one point in time shoots the lightning from his hammer, and she just stands there, she's taking it like, is, is that it? I, I think that's so dope, I think that's what that's supposed to be, but to an even bigger extent, because it's like, right, like... She could literally do this all day. It's like, yeah, I, I like that they're having a lot of fun with that. But I went on a side tangent. What I thought was so fascinating, though, was when it was like, it's like, because she was like, shouldn't you be able to, like, go off on, like, him? And, like, uh, that's what he was saying. But, like, Carol was like, yeah, but if I did, like, I could punch a hole. Like, I'd blast a hole through this planet. I was like, and I love Darcy being like, oh, like, you need to do that somewhere. Like, do it one of Dakotas, like, south or whatever. Like, I, I can't, I don't, I don't even know which one's which. And Carol's like. South Dakota's the bottom one. It's like, yeah, who cares? But then that's what gave Hill the idea of, like, let's go to the, like, Mojave Desert, and it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. But what I was wondering, though, it's like, because with the movies, we've never had an opportunity for Carol to, like, fully, fully flex. So which part of me is like, so has Carol always been holding back? I mean, because she, cause once again, there's so much of her story because we don't know when time frame wise. Well, I was about to say we do know time frame wise when at least most of the Marvel is going to take place because Monica's already got her power saints of WandaVision. So uh, it's going to be post all of this. So that's when we're going to get the Marvel. So and because by then, uh, Miss Marvel will always already be established as well. So. I'm wondering in her past or something, because maybe the Marvels will touch on that as well. It's like in that 20-year period, maybe she was in a position where she had to go full flex and she blew a hole in the plan. But I'm like, they've never touched on that in the movies of like how, like, obviously it's kind of like, yeah, Captain Marvel's like probably the strongest person in the MCU right now. Like, she's ridiculously strong, but it's like, they, we've never really seen her like flex, flex it out. So I'm like, knowing like, oh, she could bust a hole through the planet like if she really like and the fact that she knows that makes me think like oh it's happened before it's just like the movie continuity hasn't really touched on it because she hasn't really gone up like thanos would have been it but even then it's like if i because the whole point was like yeah because that's what got the whole dakota conversation started because she was like oh like there'll be too much like the human casualty would be too much of an issue and then darcy was like and then do it to one of the who cares about the dakotas they could it's like oh poor dakota's getting crapped on I know, I knew, I knew someone from, uh, I met someone, um, from Dakota, from one of the Dakotas, I don't want to say South Dakota, it, it was just like years and years ago, so, um, uh, it doesn't mean anything, it's just, I just, it just, I just thought about it, um, whichever, because I think they were from Sioux Falls, so which, I want to say, that, is that in North, that's in North Dakota, or is that South Dakota, I don't, I, I don't know, uh, I don't know locations, I'm, I'm an idiot, like I, I brought up in a previous review, I, I bring up in a lot of reviews, but, um, I just thought that was such a fascinating discussion in its own right of like, all right, that's what's going on. Obviously, Thor calling Jane up and everything, and she's just like, oh, hey, you know, uh, trying to make sure everything's okay. Even calling up Loki, being like, okay, oh, you just talk to 
door and you know he's like oh cool and he accidentally drops the phone I was like Ugh, yikes and I was like I thought he was going I, I thought we were going to cut to him being like oh and he because he was like oh like you got a friend or something so we can go on a double date going mm-hmm. I was like yeah why are you going to be gross about it dude but I thought he was going to do something evil I thought he was going to like oh here's the mischievous it's like oh no he was just being a good bro and it's like oh I dropped the phone accidentally um so now they're trying to like because I love that Darcy's the one that gives her the idea like right like Every like teenager that uh, throws a wild party gets scared because like right their parent like the mom or dad gets called so it's like so uh, Jane contacts Heimdall who takes her to Frigga it's like right I'm sorry to interrupt this but your son he's on Earth he's wilding out because the reason why this all started because like there was another planet they were on that kind of blew up but it's like no that was more like a meteor everyone got home it was fine it wasn't that big of a deal you know uh, so. Because it, that was the whole concern of, like, right, there's an alien invasion of, like, the... I mean, they are partying, like, frat boys and college kids. Well, that kind of goes hand in hand. But, like, they are destroying parts of the planet. But it's not too bad, but it is it is an alien invasion of the party variety. But still. Uh, but, like, Carol was about to, like, go full, like, full-blown nuke. And even at the same time, it's like, right, uh, we need to, like, get the nukes prepared just in case... Uh, Carol gets distracted by a cat or something like that. He's uh, Hill says, but I love that when they don't go through with it. Frank Grillo's character is just like, oh, we oh, never get to use the nukes. I love it uh, because luckily Jane got to friggin' in time and she's like, what are you? He's like, what? What are you talking about, mom? Wait, Jane ratted me out. That's not cool, mom. I'm, I'm home. You know, obviously, and then like a polar bear is walking behind him, roaring. It's just like, oh, he's like, you know, we're here. Uh, cultural exchange, cultural exchange. He's like, yeah, you know, warriors. Oh, can't wait to learn. So it's like, okay, cool. And so, like, she's like, I'm on my way. And he's like, okay. And he's trying to get everyone to stop partying. He's like, guys. And he try, like, he's like, speaks to the hammer, come, like, you know, calls upon his powers as like, Odin's son. And is like, right, okay, I need you guys to help me because my mom's on the way and my mom's going to be like super pissed. Like, he just turns into like a little teenage kid and I love it. it it's so dope. And just so, like, everyone's like, wait. Frigga's here going away and just like everyone's helping out around the place sprucing the place up and then like when Frigga does actually land it's like oh hey mom like I'm just teaching everybody it's like oh hey Frigga and it's just like he's just like yeah mom I'm just learning uh learn, you know what we always say class is like oh like uh science is magic or something like that and she's just not believing him and then Carol's coming in I thought she was gonna rat on him but it's like oh yeah uh, hey, uh, Thor, here's that, uh, here's that, uh, information you wanted, like, this and that, and it's like, oh, thanks, I was like, yeah, she was helping him out, um, but also I love that he, like, calls Mjolnir, but it's got other stuff on it, he's like, mom, I can explain, and she's just like, ah, I'm like, I was like, wait, this just, like, has generally, like, yeah, I mean, in, in a messed up way, it's like, oh, we would have gone to, like, some mass destruction from the two of them, like, knocking blows. There would have also been, like, some nukes fired at the same time. But even Hill was like, it's fine. Carol will be fine. But it's like, yeah. Uh, Thor's offering to take her on a date. He's like, we're cool, right? She's like, no. It's like, oh, he's like, I, you know, I like you. You're very, you're a genius and you're beautiful. And it's like, then ask me out on a date. He's like, oh, okay. Uh, I know a planet that's like full of unicorns. Even the waiters are unicorns. She's like, eight, pick me up. He's like, yes. And you're like, even the watcher's like, honestly, like, you know, as you like humans and Asgardians say, like, uh, happily ever after. You're like, yeah, this is a happily ever after. I was like, wow, this was like, I was like, this is the most like non-depressing way this can. Oh, and then like, we see Ultron and a whole bunch of bots show up, but it's like Ultron with all the Infinity Stones, and then he opens up the helmet, and he's got, like, I think Vision's body, so I'm guessing he jumped dimensions, because it's like, time, fr- time frame-wise, it's like, that doesn't make sense, because that shouldn't happen, so he's got to be from another dimension, dimension hopping, so. Because I think it is interesting, because, like, even, like, the... Because I, I think it's so fascinating, because I guess in my mind, I assumed, and the, the show's kind of been showing this, but I guess I never really thought about it, is... I thought, like, the Watcher knew the end-all, be-all to everything. He's watching everything as it's happening in real time. Like, it makes you wonder, is he watching one universe at a time? Like, oh, here's a small peak. And I wonder how much control does he have on that? Like, is every timeline parallel to each other? Because then you get into the whole conversation of, like, is every timeline on the same, like, time... Like, time... Is there the same time zones with parallel dimensions? So, like, last episode was taking place... before Iron Man 1, but this is kind of happening in that Iron Man 2, 
Thor, um, Captain America, like Avengers type of lady. Like once again, that Fury's big week and stuff like that, right? That you know, uh, episode three kind of focused around. So I'm wondering, like, are the, 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 like is that suggesting like those two timelines? Like we're just peeking in on that parallel time. Like is he able to kind of rewind the time and pick where he wants to pinpoint it, or is it just specifically at the points where things branch off? He can start where the branch happens and view from there, or like how that works. I'm getting into the nitty gritty of it because I'm curious because it's like, you know, like. Because I, like I said, I thought he knew all be all, the, the end all be all, but it's like no, like he's watching it along with us. So when things, like you know, when it's like right, he sees the writing on the wall and he knows like right, like it seems like he knows enough to know like oh, when Doctor Strange doing what he's doing in Episode Four, it's like oh, it's going to lead to destruction of this place. I can't help him because that could bleed over to other dimensions, and it's like he knows that just because of his knowledge. But I don't think like he's probably hoping that Doctor Strange would, like, things would change and that universe didn't end up at the way it ended up at the end of that episode, but... Because even he was kind of caught by surprise by them showing up. So it's not like he's completely omnipotent. Even he has his blind spots, you know? So I'm wondering, is this going to tie in? Because obviously the big question some people have had, and obviously it's something I've brought up, is like, are these going to tie together? There are two more episodes, so, like, are we going to have almost like a... I'm sure, like, Marvel's had its equivalency, because isn't that what Secret Wars is? Like, a multiversal war, I believe, is what that is. I could be mistaken, like, I've never read the comics, any of the Secret Wars, but... Because I know, like, there's the original, and then there's a Secret Wars 2, but I think there is, like, a more recent, like, updated version of Civil War... Not Civil War, but Secret Wars. So... I don't know, but I think it's like, it's the equivalency, like the only comparison I can make is to DC because not saying like they did it first or whatever. I'm saying it because I never, um, because I'm more familiar with it, like Crisis on Infinite Earths. Like, is it supposed, like, is that where we're kind of almost setting up to an extent? I don't know. It's definitely going to be interesting to see if they're just going to leave this here or whether the next two episodes are going to be like a two-parter and maybe in all of this. I don't know. There is, once again, there is the back, the, the trailer that's for this part of the season, like this back half of the season, but I, I didn't watch it because I don't want to know. So, but uh, I mean, this was a great episode altogether. Uh, there is one thing I meant to bring up earlier. Uh, during some of the fight, Thor was kind of like, oh, you need, like, your party, like, I love the whole thing of calling her a party pooper, everyone was like, yeah, it's like, I'm gonna call you the worst thing someone can, oh, par- we'll have a word for pe- women like you, party pooper, and then, like, after she got beat by Thor, and, like, he was like, you need a timeout, party pooper, and everyone was pointed, party pooper, party pooper, even later on calling Thor the party pooper, but regardless, he says his line where he was basically like, oh, you should smile, and she just kind of scowls at him, I'm wondering, is that Marvel making it like not necessarily inside joke but kind of like it's kind of a slap against because this could be me reading too much into it but there was at one point like this is before Captain Marvel came out like I think the trailers had came out at the time or at the very least like there, that and promotional material and people like I'm not sure how big it was but I do remember people talking about it and like people having discussions about like the fact that people were discussing this but I know that some people had an issue because apparently like some of that material like whether this trailer whether it's the promotion material people were complaining because Brie Larson wasn't smiling which is like total BS to like get caught up in it. Cause I think she even said something at the time of like, why the hell are people getting so caught up in the fact that I'm not smiling? Like, like you're not giving any other hero that much guff or like, so why are you giving me shit about it? I, I think I'm fairly certain I remember that. So I didn't know if that was supposed to be like a, like a little like wink and nod to that with that line or what, or is that just supposed to be like a, Oh, he's just so thick headed. Which I even love. It's like, Oh yeah, yeah I'm Thor. T R O H, not in that order. It's like, oh, Thor. Oh, my boy, Thor. Oh, you're an idiot. I mean, you've always been like the jockey bro frat type, sure, but it's like, man, ah, uh, just that one, that one hurt. So, uh, I'm, I'm very fascinated to see, uh, where uh, the next episodes take us with this. We only have two episodes left, so it's gonna be interesting to see uh, how these next two episodes play out. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about until the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.